UIC semifinal number two, folks. Glasgow traveling to Munster, and they booked themselves a spot in the URC final. I've just watched this one live. We will go through some key events and some stats, but you guys certainly let us know your thoughts on this one. Munster, I feel like, are going to be pretty disappointed with what's got to be one of their more kind of lackluster shifts in terms of the amount of ball they dropped and the amount of chances they were able to create being very limited but if you're a Glasgow fan you would certainly be really chuffed with the defensive shift of the boys keeping the Munster really limited and then kind of a a couple of um just like heads up rugby tries which get them the job done um both sides kind of missed chances early to be fair Crowley missed a shot at goal when their their scrum got them a penalty and Munster mucking up a line-out meant that Glasgow had a chance from turnover ball with Tupelotu going close early, but neither side really able to kind of capitalise. But it was Munster who got themselves on the board first. Richie Gray got himself yellow-carded after about four penalties in a row from Glasgow, and eventually, uh, with that kind of piggybacking Munster up the field, they opted for a three-pointer. Might have been a chance to go for the jugular with the man down, you thought, with the kind of momentum of all the penalties Glasgow were conceding, but this is not one of those games where teams got rewarded for going for touch. Generally, you didn't get much from it. So in hindsight, it was probably a good kick of goal, three points to nil. Uh, but man, during this yellow card period, Munster got absolutely nothing from it. They were not looking like scoring during the yellow card, which they'll look back on because Glasgow had two, uh, you know, middle of the first half and then kind of end of the first half, start of the second Munster just got nothing. Like, you need to exert some pressure and at least get some points from him. What is the average points in the yellow card? Like five or seven? Nothing. Really, really disappointing. And in fact, at the end of the yellow card, it's it's Stain who gets the first try of the game on 24 minutes. I mean, Munster, it's just a little bit of a miscommunication seemingly between Frisch and Nankerville. Ball hits the deck, Stain pounces, and bam, suddenly Glasgow go from having a big defensive shift to to being seven points to three up, which was kind of against the run of play in terms of pressure, but sometimes that's defense turning uh, the game around into points, right? Um, yeah, just really limited chances from Munster. Matt Ferguson also got himself yellow carded for a high shot on Peter Amani right before half time. So Munster did have a chance before half time, but um, Glasgow were able to kind of counter ruck their way into um into seeing them into the shed so seven points to three at half time munster has had 64 percent possession they've had 66 percent territory they've only managed two clean breaks to one which is pretty limited but turnovers conceded from both sides it's pretty high it's 10 9 and uh glasgow have conceded nine penalties to three so pretty horrendous penalty count from glasgow discipline letting them down but not conceding the points and um munster's line has been a bit iffy uh, 7 from 10. Um, if they'd been a little bit more clinical, you never know. But second half comes underway with Glasgow in front. Munster's turn to start conceding a few penalties. And this is despite the fact that uh, they've got the extra man. Glasgow go for the mall. If nothing else, it's eating the yellow card time. Like, they don't really look like scoring either. Like, um, when they go for their third line out, Glasgow, Byrne just steals it and Peter Amani hoofs it clear and then Byrne wins a penalty at the breakdown a minute later. So, yeah, it didn't really look like scoring. They certainly had the possession, they had the territory, they were in the right end of the field, but as I said, most importantly, potentially, just um, just eating down the clock of the yellow card period. And um, interestingly, they even had a chance to take a shot at goal during the yellow card period, but um, that one was, uh, it was pushed wide from Horn, but it didn't really matter. Because again, at the end of the yellow card period, Glasgow kind of get a try, I don't want to say out of nowhere, like the Stain one was just turnover ball, but uh, the uh, the Cancellieri one is just from, from kick return, and if you're a Munster fan, you'll be pretty disappointed with the way they were just kind of cuts to bits. It's a, it's a standard play. Um, you know, it's uh, that man, um, Jordan, Tom Jordan, he just... You th I guess you think he's going to kick it. Maybe that's kind of where a little bit of the defensive lapse comes from Munster, but it's good play from, from Glasgow, man. Tom Jordan runs it, he shapes the kick, doesn't shift it wide, gets it to Dodge, who gets it to Jones, and Jones has got he has a pretty elusive run. He's got some gas, and then uh, he kind of gets a line break. I think it was between O'Brien and was a was it Fresh. But, yeah, with the line break, 
gets it to Cancellier and he's got the gas to beat Zebo. I mean, Zebo might have been kind of closing on him, but he's got enough gas. 15 v 14 on the field, but you wouldn't know it. Glasgow get the try. 14 v 3 on the scoreboard. It's kind of looking like a long way back for, a month, for months there. Like, I know that's not a huge deficit to turn around, but this game has not been the kind of game where you think you're going to kind of get two easy tries and bring yourself back into it. That being said, Munster did um, bring some guys off the bench. They brought on Snayman, they brought on Coombs, and um, they did manage to get themselves a try. And it's one of those ones where, I guess, errors get punished. And this time it's a George Horn box kick, which kind of gets charged down. It allows the uh, the Munster guys to have a few carries, including some of those guys from the bench, the Lachman, with a kind of wee half break, which is not something you expect to see from the from the big prop. But eventually, um, you know, Fresh is able to be uh, directed over into the corner by Casey, and a uh, great conversion from the sideline makes it 10 points to 14. At that point, you could feel maybe the momentum is going to switch back to, to Munster, with the crowd getting behind them. They're back within a try. But no, it just doesn't really come off. They don't really look like scoring again. I mean, Glasgow had a penalty chance. Um, they didn't take three. They went for touch, but they ended up knocking it on. Munster certainly had some balls. Neyman had a knock on. O'Brien's come off the bench, and he has a knock on. So just kind of lacking that clinical edge. And then eventually, Glasgow get a scrum penalty. Up for a line out. They get some phases. They get an advantage. Munster get a yellow card warning. And then Nankerville. Like, he's had a good season for months, though. But it's pretty dumb. It's pretty dumb. He just goes in for a clean out, and he just smashes into Horn's head with his own head. So he gets red carded. Not not smart. Like, I know you're desperate. Your team's down. You just you want to do something, but that wasn't the play. Glasgow take the three points, so 17 points to 10. So if anything, Glasgow are not going to lose this. You know, they've got a... At most, a Munster can even it up kind of lead. Munster do chase it. I mean, Glasgow conceded a penalty. Munster went for touch. They mauled at phases, but then eventually, Snayman's offload to, to Ryan probably just wasn't the play. You need to be a bit more patient, but scrum. And uh, Glasgow are able to see it out. So, yeah. I do feel like Munster are going to be really disappointed with the shift they put in. But um, Glasgow will be really chuffed with how quiet they were able to make them look and especially keeping Munster scoreless during those two yellow card periods and scoring both of their tries during the yellow cards so yeah encouraging stuff from the Glasgow boys run meters finished 448 to 440 so nothing really in it position and territory are pretty even at the end of the day 51 49 for the position territory 53 47 but that means Glasgow had the better of the second half because remember it was all Munster in the first 61 39 and 59 41 in the second for, for Glasgow. Uh, clean breaks is 4-4. Defenders beaten 24-17 to Glasgow in the end of it. Turnovers conceded 18 by Munster. I mean, Glasgow's got 14, so both sides will be a bit disappointed with that, but 18's way too high. Um, penalties conceded 12-11, so Munster on the wrong side of the ref's whistle in the second. Glasgow, man, talked about their defense. Tackle percentage is 90%, which is class. I mean, Munster's 85 is solid, but once you're getting into the 90s, you're really doing well. Um, 148 tackles made by Glasgow, 133 made by Munster. Um, individuals, Hodnett had five defenders beaten at 54 meters, which is not a bad shift. Uh, O'Donoghue had 15 from 17 tackles, but Stain, 99 meters, two clean breaks, including his drive, beat the defender. Two Pilotu, man of the match, six defenders beaten from him. Xander Fagerson has 16 from 17 tackles. So yeah, quite the shift from the Glasgow boys. Booked themselves a spot in the URC final. Congratulations to them. I am off to watch semi-final number one, which I haven't seen because it was on at two in the morning. This game started at five, so I watched this one first. I do know the result of the other one because they must have mentioned it at least three times during this broadcast, which kind of sucks. But oh well, uh, I'm still going to watch it and um, see how things play out. I don't know the score. I do know the result. But anyway, I won't spoil it here. You guys let us know your thoughts on this one, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.